Obesity is going to break healthcare stocks. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I was reading an article on Barron's this weekend by Josh Nathan Cassis, and it was one of those moments that really blew my mind when I started to consider the wider implications. It has caused me to reevaluate some of the positions that I have in my portfolio and to advise a healthy bit of caution for a few stocks that I am going to mention in this video and applies to any substantially similar stock. Obesity drugs are going to break the healthcare system financially. Oh, they're going to be blockbusters for Novo Nordisk and Eli Lilly, who are about to start raking in tens of billions of dollars a year on their new obesity drugs, and that's great news for the drug makers. But it could be a financial disaster for the insurance companies and government agencies who will be under a lot of pressure to cover it under their healthcare plans. So this video is a warning for publicly traded companies like United Health Group, Anthem Blue Cross, Cigna, Humana, and Centene. If you like this kind of content, please help this channel out by liking this video and subscribing. The new obesity drugs, Ozemic and Wagovi, while good for the drug makers, will still put enormous financial pressure on healthcare providers. The two new medicines, known as GLP-1 receptor antagonists, promise weight reductions of as much as 20% and may cut patients' risk of heart attack or stroke. So far, they're the most effective and safe weight loss drugs in history. Why is this important? Well, we in the United States just need to face the fact that we are in fact a fat country. More than 40% of U.S. adults are obese, up from 30% two decades ago. Obesity has a cost, both in terms of your health and financially. No surprise then that the demand for these medicines is huge and projected to get even larger as more supply comes online. The crisis for healthcare providers will likely come as spending on the drugs threatens to overwhelm the insurers and employers because there is going to be a lot of political pressure to force healthcare companies to cover these drugs. State legislatures are going to dress up the laws they pass as a cost-saving measure. And to be frank, long-term, it will be a cost-saving measure for these insurers if the healthcare benefits of a less obese population are fully realized. Curbing obesity would have the potential to save the healthcare system a lot of money. A recent USC Schaefer paper argued that Medicare coverage of obesity medications would save the program more than $700 billion over 30 years. But those savings, 30 years in the future, won't do much to mitigate the shorter term financial crisis in healthcare providers, which is coming. The financial stress on these companies would probably peak from 2025, when Medicare coverage of these medicines might begin, to 2027, when the cost of some of these drugs could start to drop. So two factors are going to play a huge role. One, there are a lot of obese people in America and the benefits of a less obese population are clear. Two, these are expensive medicines. Novo's Wagobi has a list price of more than $16,000 a year. That means a potentially monumental tab for insurers. By 2030, JP Morgan's analysts expect the amount on GLP-1 obesity treatments in the US to be about $50 billion, or a tenth of the $421 billion spent on outpatient drugs in the US in 2021. So a tenth of all the money spent on drugs in the United States will be spent controlling obesity. Healthcare plans will be under extraordinary pressure from patients to cover these drugs. We certainly don't elect the smartest people to state legislature, and they are going to start passing laws to require insurers to pick up the tab. It will be hard to say no. These drugs are already available to treat type 2 diabetes, which is already having an adverse financial impact on the payers. Access to the medicines for patients who don't have the disease remains limited. So far, only one of the GLP-1 drugs, Wagovi, is approved by the FDA as an obesity treatment. As more of these drugs are approved for obesity treatment, the combined cost of paying for both diabetes and weight loss treatment will certainly strain the financial system. Medicare's prescription drug benefit, Medicare Part D, covers roughly 50 million older Americans. 
it is currently legally barred from paying for weight loss drugs under the theory that obesity is a result of lifestyle choices rather than a medical condition. Whether that will change is perhaps the biggest question hanging over the future of the new obesity drugs. If that happens, the cost burden is going to be enormous. A paper in the New England Journal of Medicine estimated that if just 10% of Medicare participants with obesity took the medicine, it would cost $26.8 billion a year, roughly equivalent to 20% of all Part D spending in 2021. About 87 million Americans, roughly a quarter of the population, get their insurance coverage through Medicaid. In contrast to Medicare, state Medicaid programs, which use state and federal funds to pay for the cost of uh, caring for low-income people, are required to cover obesity drugs. Only a few states have chosen to pay for Wagovi. Still, spending on the new GLP-1 drugs is growing. According to a September report, Medicaid spending on the four approved versions from Novo and Lilly, Wagovi for weight loss and the others for diabetes, surged from $547 million in 2021 to $1.1 billion in 2022. The employer-based insurance market is where I think the most impact will be felt in terms of your investment portfolio. Those companies I mentioned before are all involved in the employer-based market. The new obesity medicines are already increasing anxiety between offering competitive benefits and keeping premiums affordable for employers and individuals. Mid-sized employers, smaller employers, and even some larger ones are asking themselves, how are they going to afford these medications? They aren't going to have a choice. These drugs just aren't any medicines. They're a cultural phenomenon already backed by omnipresent advertising campaigns. They're new, they're heavily marketed, celebrities are shedding pounds using them, and they're marketed in a way that's gonna be difficult to tell people, look, it's a safe and effective drug, it'll make you healthier, but you can't afford it. So think carefully before sinking a lot of your hard-earned dollars into healthcare providers over the next few years. It's gonna take some time, but the cost of obesity drugs is going to start taking a bite out of profits. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to tell me what a terrible human being I am in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you very much and have a nice day.